Hi everyone, I want to talk about apostenuria in sickle cell disease patients. What? Let me say a big thank you for listening to my presentations through my channel. Before you could enjoy this very presentation, it will be advisable if you can go over sickle cell disease parts one, two, three, and four. Then you'll be able to grasp every point here. So with that, let's go. Aposternuria, that is inability to concentrate urine. Patients with sickle cell disease, or even those who are not fully having disease, but they are carriers, otherwise known as traits, and for example, hemoglobin SS, those are the sickle cell disease ones, and AS are traits or carriers. They will all have difficulty concentrating their urine. The situation is worse with increased age, which means the decline in urinary concentrating ability will get worse as an individual diagnosed with sickle cell disease or AS as they advance in age. Blood transfusion has helped greatly in ameliorating this situation, probably from failure of the medullary counter current exchange and hence medullary osmolality is not raised. What is the pathogenesis here? Well, the pathogenesis is not so clear. Apotheosis added that intravascular sickle red blood cells are responsible. In renal blood vessels, in those with either heterozygotes or homozygotes inheritance like AS or SS respectively, red blood cell shapes are responsible. The above hypothesis is very reasonable. AS or carriers could be doing well in infancy, but it will get worse as they grow in age. If osmolality is greater than 600 milliosmos per kilogram, it is not likely that individual that very individual is having homozygous SS. Let me explain. If you are confused that this situation is either because this person is having hemoglobin SS, that is sickle cell disease, or AS, and you acid osmolality and you could get 600 milliosmoles per kilogram, you can bear your license that this very person, that is, if the lab, lab has done a good job, no mixing up of samples and the person who read the report read it accurately, then this person is not a sickle cell disease patient. You can bet that this person is not having hemoglobin SS if the smolarity is 600 milliosmoles per kg or greater. Then you can rule out hemoglobin SS. Here, there is no central nervous problem. For example, no problem with pituitary in any form. No renal pathology no antidiuretic hormone or adosterone anomaly. It is all about the abnormal sickle shape of the red blood cells. Treatment here is essentially blood transfusion and increased fluid intake. Although someone will ask me, you are telling me somebody could concentrate the urine, the person is peeing a lot and still saying persons should be taking fluid, when they are losing 
you know, too much fluid, they'll become more dehydrated, right? And dehydration is going to worsen the situation for the you know, sickle cell disease patient. So it's such a you know, difficult problem that they just have to cope with. In sickness, please try to decrease the protein intake so as to lower the solute and reduce urine volume loss. For peace of mind as a physician, you can do renal function tests just to be sure you are dealing with only a posterior caused by the sickle cell disease hemoglobin SS problem or AS as the case might be, not because of any other problem anywhere. So do your renal function test. Be sure this is not nephrogenic diabetes insipidus. Have your electrolytes done and do your glucose level so as to be sure this is not as a result of diabetes mellitus. You can rule out renal tract infection with renalysis and you know, finding out what the nitrate level is. I would not suggest that you waste your time or money doing MRI or CT of the head because there's no problem with the pituitary. So it's not a central diabetes insipidus problem anywhere. So don't, just don't waste your money on that. Note, antibiotics cannot solve this problem. I have a practical example of um, somebody I knew very well who had um, a child with sickle cell disease, was taken to a physician, and the physician prescribed antibiotics. And after taking the antibiotics, I was called on phone, and I don't know what's going on, and I've taken my son to see the doctor, We've completed seven days, you know, for our antibiotics, yet still bedwetting. And I said, oh, what is other associated problem? Then the man owned up that oh, had been a known sickle cell disease patient. I said, oh, wow, we might be dealing with aposternuria here. And with aposternuria, the antibodies won't solve the problem because it's not urinary tract infection. So sickle cell disease patients still need proper hydration even in the face of this. What we can do is to take measures that will prevent bedwetting. In other words, all measures that could be taken in secondary anuresis should be put in place. And outside that, maybe you can, if you are not convinced about the genotype, have that done. And if it comes out to be hemoglobin excess, then you don't bother your head about it anymore because the older you become, the worse the situation about that. And if it is AS at infancy, they're not gonna have that problem a lot, but as they grow older, they also, you know, will be coming down with it. So with that, I come to the end of this presentation and probably the end of all I have to say as per sickle cell disease patients or sickle cell disease anemia. I wish that everybody will go over Sickle cell disease parts one, two, three, and four, and conclude with this. And I'm truly wishing all affected people well. Thanks for listening. Kindly subscribe to my channel so that once I publish this and other pieces of info, you'll be able to get them immediately. I appreciate that.